Uh, hey guys, this is Christopher. I'm remote today, going to meet up with one of my programmers for some lunch, and we're working on a new big project, something uh, that's really going to be targeted and uh, something I've been working on for a long time. But anyhow, uh, just wanted to talk about uh, patience in trading. And this morning, we had an ex big excursion outside the upper side of the bands. Uh, I showed this trade live, kind of did a, what do they call it, a reel or something on my Instagram page. And uh, I was in the last portions of the trade because, you know, what do you get, like two minutes and something on a reel? So it's not like I can film the whole thing. But anyhow, uh, big, beautiful excursion outside of the bands as the market attempted to try to come back up to a key uh, area of resistance. That was a higher time frame. On the lower time frame, we pushed, we pushed, we pushed. It was a grinder, and I took a bunch of shots at it. And sometimes you just got to be patient. You just, if you know it's a good area of price, I keep swinging. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a boxing match sometimes. So, the market pushed, pushed, and I got a little bit of red candles, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to get in and start taking a shot. And we were already outside the band, so I took a shot. Got a green, bailed, lost a little bit. Got another four bar reversal, took a shot. I got my, okay, now this this might be the time I get some sort of pullback. And I'm not necessarily looking for it to drop 300 points, but you know, at least come down to the mid band area like this. This one was a good area, but these were hollow. I shouldn't have taken the trade. I should have waited. Got a four bar reversal and took a shot. Right away, got green bars, bailed. So now I'm down two trades and I and I'm like, hey, next. I don't I don't worry about it. I know I'm gonna get a setup here. Got another four bar reversal and it started moving. I'm like, okay, we're getting some movement. I held on longer than I normally do because I wanted to make up for some prior losses. And then when we got to a certain level, I pulled out a big chunk of the trade, left some on, and I think I was in twenty or twenty-five MNQs. Now I had hit the long side and made money this morning. Uh, which one was I in? I was in, I, I got in either this trade here or this one. I don't remember. I like that double and then the market started stair-stepping higher and I worked in and it took a while, but finally it took off and I, I did okay on that. But my big trade today was hitting this area across all accounts uh, this is some of my Apex accounts. I'll show you my TPT account. Uh, I'll pause it and I'll go log into that one. I did good on my TPT account. Now the TPT account's only 150k, so I don't trade it as big as I do my Apex accounts that are 250, 1250, and then nine uh, 300k accounts, so a total of 10. Uh, so anyhow, uh, that was just a wondrous new band setup. And sometimes you just got to be patient. You got to work it. Market had some good news that housing number was pretty good. Uh, I really would have preferred if this would have been higher near this resistance level. The fact that it wasn't was acting like a magnet. So when I was getting in here, I knew this baby could run and make a final last push up to this level. And if it did, then I would be really ready to jump on it because that's that causes reactivity when you get those quick short covering bursts a lot of times they get sold into when the market finally gets to a level but it worked out they've been they fought it on the way down and then it just ran and ran and ran and uh, uh, and you know they pretty much are giving back all the days uh, rally action so far not surprised because we got a big number tomorrow we got GDP and I don't think everybody uh, after a really nice rally we've been on wants to be all that long from the highs so all the buying that came in today for the pump was pretty much to pump this up so they could turn around and sell into it and take some profits off uh, going into the big GDP number tomorrow. So we'll see where the market ends, but amateurs open the market, the big boys, the institutionals close the market. So we'll see the last hour what they do. Uh, we could come all the way down, retest this level and even blow it out uh you know before the end of the day i mean that could happen if this is one of those where they're just cashing out uh ahead of the number type days so anyhow let's go take a look at the tpt account i hit it pretty much in the same area i was long a little bit in the morning and then hit the hit the high the sell so let's take a look at that
Okay, so did pretty good in the TPT account. Did a little bit of light, uh, long action in the morning, but then uh, this one I got in late. I hit one. That didn't work. Hit the second one. That worked. I actually added to it. Uh, I think I added to it on this uh, trend following setup. I know I added, I'm pretty sure it was the first one, not the second one, because I'm like, okay, I think we're going to make a run to the other side of the bands at a minimum. And now they're just, you know, they're the the magnet right now is these lows and the supply down here. So a uh, heck of a day, uh, really nice movement to the upside, beautiful rally, got some good econ news. And the big boys are using it to ring the till. And when I say big boys, I mean, some of the bigger hedge funds, but mainly uh, investment bank, institutional side, they're, they pumped and now, you know, they cashed out into the highs and they played a little sneaky game today. They, they didn't even bring it up here. They brought it close and then dumped into it uh, when they could, probably could have easily pushed, got some range extension, then sold it a bit higher. But, you know, uh, they're, sometimes they're only willing to put in so much liquidity with buy program activity and once that liquidity is used up, if they're not quite to the level, then that's it. They're done. And they'll turn around and start cashing out into that uh, price moved a lot higher. So anyhow, really good new bands trades, but you got to be patient sometimes. You know, this, uh, let me use this drawing tool. This was some really grinding price action in here. And you just got to be patient. And you got to wait till you get something. So drive bar with a four bar reversal there. That was a shot number one. That was a proper setup. That didn't work. Second one did. Scrubbed a bit and then accelerated to the downside. So this one got slapped down pretty quick, but buyers came in and lifted. Uh, I waited and started working this area because... We were at least getting close enough to this key level of resistance uh, on the higher time frame. So right in there, it would have I would have liked it even better and probably would have traded even bigger size on my on my apex counts if it would have gotten up higher. But all, overall, good day. And uh, I guess my main message is, you know, really consider watching and evaluating the capability of getting in and working these new bands trades where you have confluence, price getting close to area of resistance, higher time frame well outside of the bands. And then now your lower time frame chart is giving you four bar reversals or at least drive bars down back uh, showing that there's at least some initial selling coming in that's starting to pick up some momentum. So there you have it. New bands trades. Uh, some of the action today. Tomorrow GDP day. Make sure you guys know some of these prop firms you can't be in trades during the news release. So be careful. Don't lose your account because you're in trades during the news release because GDP is one of the big ones. So there you have it. Tomorrow should be a heck of a lot of movement. And uh, looking forward to the trade day tomorrow. Talk to you all later.